How has the CIA interfered in the American film industry since the Cold War era till today? What Hollywood films have come to market carrying the CIA's message and offering a vicious and extreme image of America's enemies? Who are the enemies? Who are targeted for destruction by the American agents? In 1917, when the United States entered World War I, President Woodrow Wilson's Committee on Public Information enlisted the aid of America's film industry to making training films and features supporting the cause. George Creel, chairman of the CPI, believed that the movies had a role in carrying the gospel of Americanism to every corner of the globe. The Federal Bureau of Investigation established an office in the 1930s to bolster its image in radio programs, films and television shows. In 1947, the Department of Defense followed suit and now the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the Marine Corps, the Coast Guard, the Department of Homeland Security and the Secret Service all have motion picture and television offices or official assist to the media on their payroll. During World War II, Hollywood's contribution was to provide propaganda. Hollywood's most famous movie stars leave the film capital to help the government sell war bonds. Irene Dunn, Ronald Coleman, Hedy Lamarr, Greer Garson, all part of a contingent of some 50 screen celebrities giving their time and talents to aid the national war effort. The country has asked the people to invest a billion dollars in one month to help pay for the war. And here's the start of the drive. Boarding a special train for Washington, they'll tour 300 cities from coast to coast. Go to any city that agrees to subscribe at least one million dollars. Buy, 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 buy a bond. And by and by, the bonds you buy will bring you victory. Buy, After the war, buy, Washington buy, reciprocated by using subsidies, special provisions in the Marshall Plan, and general clout to pry open resistant European film markets. Every society to some degree has um, and you know, uh, structural elements that want a particular representation of the individuals in society. The CIA's involvement in Hollywood goes all the way back to, not only Hollywood, it really starts in the media. In 1953, um, Alan Dulles, a creator department that wanted to really influence the media and the CIA. Um, Carl Bernstein, of the famous Woodward and Bernstein um, journalist who exposed Watergate, he was actually the co-winner of the Pulitzer Prize in, I believe, 1973. In 1977, I believe, he uh, published a, an article about 20,000 to 25,000 words titled The CIA and the Media, and this was actually published in Rolling Stone magazine. Uh, in 1977, and it really disclosed the, the, the you know, the hand, um, the sleight of hand that Hollywood had in, um, in influencing the media as a whole. Now, eventually this would, you know, lend itself to Hollywood for obvious reasons. But, you know, there was actually in the 70s, uh, Senator Frank Church headed a committee, um, the Senate Intelligence Committee, to actually look into the involvement, the extent of the involvement in the CIA in the media. Um, we had uh, William Colby and George Bush Sr. Um, come out and actually, you know, sort of thwarted the investigation. And their logic was, what their reasoning was, that this would you know, disclose some highly sensitive information. It would not be right for national security. A lot of the same issues we see going on today. With the CIA's 50-year history in the affairs of media, it should not come as a surprise that it is now still interfering in many of the most popular films and TV shows. Espionage novelist Tom Clancy has enjoyed an especially close relationship with the CIA. In 1984, Clancy was invited to Langley after writing The Hunt for Red October, which was later turned into the 1990 film. I present you the ballistic missile submarine Red October.
My officers and I request asylum in the United States of America. The agency invited him again when he was working on Patriot Games in 1992, and the movie adaptation was, in turn, granted access to Langley facilities. More recently, The Sum of All Fears, in 2002, depicted the CIA as tracking down terrorists who detonate a nuclear weapon on US soil. For this production, CIA director George Tenet gave the filmmakers a personal tour of the Langley headquarters. The film's star, Ben Affleck, also consulted with agency analysts. Where are you going? I can't tell you that, Jack. Tell her where you're going. In fact, tell her who you work for. She'll be impressed. I work for the CIA, and the director asked me at the last minute to come with him to Russia to do a nuclear arms inspection. To more recently, we have in post-9, post-9-11, we actually had a visit, and this is all open, um, the, a visit from, in the aftermath of 9-11, George, uh, George Bush, Dick Cheney, and Karl Rove made a visit to Hollywood in an effort to have greater cooperation with the war on terror. They actually met uh, with, with the, the head of the MPAA, uh, Jack Valenti, and they f wanted to figure out ways and how the war on terror could benefit not only national security, but depict certain representations of the United States, um, its missions in military. Black Hawk Down, Zero Dark Thirty, and Argo, those are only a few major recent productions showing how today's movie industry promotes U.S. foreign policy. And now for the moment we have all been waiting for. And the Oscar goes to Argo. With Michelle Obama awarding Ben Affleck's Argo the Oscar for best movie, the industry showed how close it is to Washington. Argo has seven Academy Award nominations this year. Argo is a propaganda film concealing the ugly truth about the Iranian hostage crisis and designed to prepare the American public for a potential upcoming confrontation with Iran. It glorifies the CIA and Ben Affleck spoke with the highest praise for the CIA. One of the themes of Argo is, is about storytelling and how powerful it is from political theater to um, the way we kind of communicate to our children to the way that we inspire people, you know, and it's interesting that Hollywood and uh, you know, the clandestine services are both spend most of their time convincing people that's something that's not true. I think probably Hollywood is full of CIA agents and we just don't know it. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised at all to discover that, you know, this was extremely common. I got an idea. They're a Canadian film crew for a science fiction movie. I fly into Tehran. We all fly out together as a film crew. I need you to help me make a fake movie. So you want to come to Hollywood and act like a big shot without actually doing anything? Yeah. 